Matthew, we have one more game to look at. The All Ireland Hurling Club final, which took place in t- at one thirty today, in the wind of Croke Park again. I mean, it, one thing that was a spectacle was the flags up behind the goal. The flags were doing loop the loops. They were spinning one way and then spinning the next immediately after. There were swirling winds around the stadium, but in those swirling winds, St Thomas's won the All Ireland Club Hurling Championship final. They beat O'Loughlin Gales by eighteen points to seventeen, and that photo right there. Credited to RTE. That photo is what happened right at the death. Aina Burke with the extraordinary winning score. And and just to touch on that to start, what a point to win it by Aina Burke. Absolutely sensational score. At that late stage, to pull out a point like that, outrageous. And ends up being the difference as St. Thomas's win the All-Ireland. It's an amazing, actually, because I, I was seeing on the new, um, uh, news board of them there that Aina Burke was 17 years of age when t- Thomas has won the honour of the 2013 and he was on the panel for the first time in the se- its senior level. And for him, 10 years later, to hit uh, a brilliant score, one of the scores of the ages, and um, to do that in the last minute of the game, is one. It, it, to do it in any other stage of the game is one thing, but to do it in the last minute is just absolutely unreal. When your bodies are tired, and he just whipped it really. Like it was just an incredible score. It was on the sideline. The skill level is absolutely superb. And yeah, it's a brilliant, brilliant score for me in a Burke. And we knew he had this in his locker. I think he scored four goals and 25 points going into this game, you know, um, in all the championships so far. So we knew he had skill. Could he produce it on the big day? That's your answer. Yes. What a performance from Aina Burke. What a performance from David Burke as well. And I know yeah. this is about Ian's point, brilliant score and all that, but David was absolutely superb as well. Absolutely unreal today. And when you think about the story that he's been through, the you know, the injuries, um, nobody expected him to come back into into play, never mind playing in all or the final. Played in all or the final, and he put in every last um, bit what he had. He was just absolutely superb. And the Thomas's team, brilliant win from them. But um, it was a controversial game, very exciting game. But there are some controversial incidents. I'm sure we'll discuss this in this chat too. We will get into that. And I mean, that is going to be the next thing that we are going to discuss. Anybody watching, I'm sure you've all seen it. It's done the loops on social media. Matthew, you had it up quick as well on your Instagram Gaelic that's man go give that a follow if you don't already I don't know to be honest if you're watching me and you don't follow Matthew I don't really know how at this stage but anyway this was up Matthew this is taken from your Instagram page um this here Finton Burke on the goal line well bit behind the goal line with the ball in his hand I mean that's the ghost goal of all ghost goals that's in surely Ah, oh, come on, Seamus. I don't know, is that even a question? Um, <laughs> oh, it's in. Absolutely, it's in. And uh, credit, actually, um, Durbin O'Sullivan, the former Cork fullback, actually posted that on Twitter. I just got it on my Instagram, and then I took another photo as well uh, from the other angle. Um, so, yeah, it was um, yeah, it was just incredible in its own way. How did the umpires not spot that? First of all, why are they beside the slitter? Is, and they're behind us now? I, I don't get it. I really don't. And you were saying off air, maybe it's because they'd be afraid to get hit by the ball. Probably it was. I, um, I think that was it. I think that they might have been thinking here, especially when they're going for goal. I think they might have been thinking here, get me out of this. <laughs> get me out of the way in case that ball yeah. flies wide and hits me. That's the thing, yeah. And I thought it did, that was their mindset as well. And as well as that on my Instagram page, I put up a vote as well. Was it a goal or not? And um, not surprisingly, 410 said it was a goal and 79 says it wasn't. So a huge gulf there. So I mean, a lot of people could see it was a goal. Unfortunately, the guys that matter didn't see uh, if, if it was a goal. And I, I'd um, put this question to you, Seamus. It was a point in the game at the end. Brilliant score by Ian Burke and it might mean nothing now. But do you think the game should go to a replay because of this? No. I don't, I don't think you can say that that would warrant a replay when they didn't give a replay last year for Kilmichael Croaks and Wally Graham's Glen. Now, like we're looking at it there, it's clearly over the line, but if you didn't give a replay for Glen K- Kilmichael Croaks last year, when it was in the last minute of the game, I don't know how you justify giving a replay for something that happened in the first half. 
Maybe, if you get yeah, what I mean, yeah. I do, I do get it. But like, I think you're slipping into dangerous territory if you're to say a terrible refereeing decision equals replay, because. I mean, <laughs> there, there's going to be a lot of, you know, poor decisions over the next few months. I don't know if you agree with that, though. But, like, in my opinion, it's just – it's clear that there should be, like, a, a TMO system or, like, something like that in place. That, like, VAR, for example, it is slow. It is frustrating. It is annoying. And it does slow the game down. But if you made a rule in the GA, for example, that you only have 30 seconds to make your mind up, 30 seconds to look at you just look at the first two replays and then you make up your mind because it only takes five seconds to look at this to know that that's not over the to sorry to know that that is over the line do you get what i mean would that be something that we could work towards it is to be fair yeah i think actually a good system and this is a bit of an advertisement no way other than the energy but the six nations is coming up i think in two weeks time Watch how the TMO um, deals with decisions like this, um, controversial decisions. What the referee actually does is he gets a mic, he goes up to his uh, TMO, has a discussion, and we can hear what's happening in that discussion. And and at the end of it, it's the same as American football. They tell the stadium why they'd award a goal or not a goal or a decision or anything like that. And I think that would work very well. And that's why I think soccer, soccer and VAR, I think that fails so much because there's no clarity. And I think the GA needs a bit of clarity. I think rugby is a better example with uh, the team all, to be honest with you. But even Hawkeye, why can't Hawkeye, you know, have a decision to make in this either? They have a decision making points. Why can't they have a decision making goals? It's yeah. Oh, it's a really, really strange. I don't know when, um, like, even. And that could have robbed uh, O'Loughlin Gaines now today. And it, it was just unfortunate. It was just unfortunate because at half time, instead of O'Loughlin Gaines being five points up, they were two points up. And yeah. ultimately, that and then cost with the James them. Regan's red card and everything, like it could have really tipped it in their favour. Yeah, it could have. It could have. If Swartz and maybe. And yeah, it was a difficult, like even Paddy Deegan, I think, was having a discussion with the ref at uh, half time as well. And yeah, things were getting heated, you know. So, yeah, but I think the refs need a lot more help than what they're getting as well. And I think VAR or TMO or whatever would do wonders for the GA. And I've heard yeah. some arguments that there should be Hawkeye in every single ground in the uh, Gaelic games. So far, there's only Hawkeye in two grounds Crow Park and Sepple Stadium. And that's not good mm-hmm. enough. Simply not. Well, it, it comes down what? to money. It, it genuinely does come down to the money. Like that, do they have enough money to put Hawkeye in in provincial grounds, places like Parnell Park, and places like you know, well, Super Valley Park. <laughs> but um, nah, what can. But like, it that is a money thing, and I do think that look in in twenty twenty five years, I think Hawkeye will be covered across most of the grounds. But I think. The, the opportunity to use replays should be something that we make more accessible to referees because the reality is, is they get the blame. They get the blame for decisions like that. The referee could no way could the referee have seen in as quick as that, that for definite that ball went over the line. The other day, he'd be 100% sure. He has to trust his umpires in that moment because they are right there. But like... Any time, most of the time, there's been absolutely bizarre decisions. The umpires have usually been right there. Like, they, they are literally cardboard cutouts half the time. They literally stand there, wave flags. And you think the Kilmacu Crokes thing, they were standing right beside Darren Mullen, who was supposed to go off. You, um, Joe Sheridan's goal for me is against Loud in 2010. I mean, one of them watched him throw the ball in. Like, there's been a lot of key decisions where the umpires have been standing right there. And I'm just like, for that, they were in a bad position to see whether or not that ball did cross the line. Like, I'll bring up the image again. If we if we bring up the image here, they're standing right behind the goal. And Finton Burke has his body somewhat between, I'd say the umpire on the left there is the screen as you're watching it. Finton Burke has his kind of legs between the umpire and the ball. So he can't actually see where the ball is. The umpire on the right looks like he should have a somewhat decent view of it from first glance. 
But again, we have to remember, this is all happening at 100 mile an hour. And I do think the umpires probably were standing behind the goal so as to avoid being hit by a slitter should that shot go wide. But the reality is, you can see there, that ball is over the line. And like, O'Loughlin Gales do have a right to feel pretty hard done by in this situation. And for future, there has to be some sort of video assistance to the ref. And I'm not, I'm not saying the Premier League one. I'm saying speed it up. Give you give the person who's on the other end, give them something like 30 seconds to look at the replay and make their decision quick so that the game doesn't get slowed down. Because it only takes takes 10 seconds to take a look at this and say, yeah, that's over the line. So, like, O'Loughlin Gales do deserve to feel hard done by on that call. Yeah, to be fair. And it, what I will say is, well, and this is coming to my head now, remember in 2018, Austin Glee, I think it was a Tipperary and Waterford of the Munster Champions. Yes, Austin yes, I remember. Clearly, clearly holds the slitter above the line, above the po- above the crossbar. And then the umpire gives a goal. And you're like, yeah, I remember that. You're giving that as a goal and you're not giving this as a goal. <laughs> I mean, it's, it's bizarre, isn't it? It really is. And I do think genuinely, if the umpires can't make crucial decisions like that, and that is a crucial that, them two were crucial decisions in different ways because Watford could have stayed in the Munster Championship at that time and we wouldn't go on about this meme about Watford at the group stages if that decision was made correctly. And yeah. in this, Olaf and Gaze could have their name on the trophy this evening. That's it. It's just, it's just really, really poor decisions. I do think it's just the re- we don't need to abuse referees or abuse umpires. No. They need help. That's they it. need help. They need so for anybody the, for anybody who say, oh, the rep... Put yourself in their position. Hurling is the fastest field game in the world. <laughs> a shot for goal, and it immediately springs back out. Nobody knows what's going on. You wouldn't like to be the one that has to confidently say, this is what happened. And like, that's why they need as much help as we can give them. Now, we have a comment in here from Hurling1234. He says, you would feel for Mark Berg, and he was in tears after that miss at the end, I'm assuming. He missed a free in the same position 16 years ago for St. Kieran's versus De La Salle in Croke Cup to level it that day as well. Look, it was a difficult free. It was a monstrous distance out. I actually, by chance for that, I was sitting in the lower uh, lower Cusick. So I was close enough to where Bergen was taking that free from. And it was a monstrous distance out. Um, and the minute he hit it, you knew he hadn't got it. It was going wide. And then the referee blows full time. And like, like for a guy who's been absolutely so super consistent with the freeze all throughout the year and has been one of the reasons why O'Loughlin Gales are where they are. I mean, you pulled it up before the final one. You were doing the preview on your channel. He had, what was it, 62 points that he had up until that point? Like he's been their leading light up front. And it's such a shame for him that he finishes his championship on that missed free, but he, he should hold his head high. He was outstanding throughout the year. He was. And the thing is, actually, we mentioned on your podcast and my podcast as well in the previews, that whoever had the best free-taking day would win it. And it turned out Connor Cooney definitely did. He got six points there. I think Bergen got two or three as well. And that's just double scores. And Connor yeah. Cooney just had the better of the day for them. And now Lachlan Gaines, that we talk, talked about their wing backs and their centre backs. And actually, in their half back line, they managed to combine six points. That just showed their way to reliant on their defence in many ways as well. And that was the big difference today. That's that was my next did. point to you, actually. Mm-hmm. That, that was my next point to you. Is it sounds really harsh, but when we were talking through it, we were saying, oh, Lachlan Gales' style over the last while has kind of tended to be keep the defence tight with Mikey Butler, Hugh Lawler, Paddy Deegan, and then let Mark Bergen do the rest up front. The reality is Thomas has had a man sent off. The game was there for O'Loughlin Gales to really kick on, and I think that no forward that they had really put their hand up and said, give me the ball, I'm going to tear through this Thomas's defence now. Whereas I feel like if Thomas's were a man down 10 minutes into the second half, ironically against Bally Gunner or against Bally Hell Shamrocks, I think they would have finished them off. Yeah, they, they would have. They would have. And that's that's the killer instinct that we talked about with O'Loughlin Gaze. And they, 
just didn't have it. They had it in the first half, to be fair. They were hitting nearly everything over the bar. I think they had 75% in the first half. It massively dropped off in the second half. I don't know, was it just the swirling wind? And while we're on the swirling wind, like uh, Eamon in the last um, uh, with the football, he was mentioning that uh, Glenn had the wind in the second half and Bridges in the first half, whereas in the hurling, it looked like Olak and Gaze had the winds in the first half. And uh, <laughs> Thomas was, it wasn't that bad in Crow Park. Like was, I no, I just I was fascinated because I was in um so I was in the yeah no I was in the lower Cusick for the hurling game and it did genuinely feel like the wind was changing direction every five seconds. Um I think it was one of those like where you looked up at the flags and they were absolutely pinging around, like left to right to left to right to left to right. And um yeah, it was just crazy. Um Look, the atmosphere was absolutely incredible as well. Though. Like you just have to give it up to the fans that that travelled down. Like it was, like the premium part. You looked up, that was absolutely packed. Um, the lower tier, like the atmosphere coming from the crowd, was absolutely sensational. It proves the interest is there. Like if you know the streaming services, like you know your clubber and Dublin, like GA back in the club championship and everything like that, and TG Car with the work that they do. The audience is there. The club championship is an absolutely sensational championship that we have. And the showpiece was a success in that it was two games that went right down to the wire. It was two games where there was only one point in it. And yeah. my next thing that I'm, my next thing that I'm going to come to you about is what stages in this game, apart from the obvious, like being the Annenberg point, what stages do you think Thomas has shaded it? What do you think shaded it towards them? It was probably, and uh, ironically, it was around the time that they got the red card through um, James Regan. I think it was the start of the second half. Yeah, They powered on like a train in, in that period. And it looked like O'Loughlin Gaze just did not answer. And that was probably the difference between the two sides in the end. And yes, the end of Burr Point was absolutely brilliant. But you have to consider as well, O'Loughlin Gaze just equalised before that point as well. So they were behind. So... Like it was really the second half burst from St. Thomas's. It was brilliant. And the fact they were down to 14 men as well. And yes, there was the goal line incident, but as well as that, St. Thomas has kind of had incidents against them. The goal locking games could have easily had two red cards in that first half. On another given day, they would have been given us reds, and James Burke would have got off Scott Free with a yellow. But like him, it was a bit of good compare them to the Olak and Gaze challenges. The James the James Regan one was a bit iffy. I don't know, was it a red card to be honest with you? It was just, mm-hmm. again, another a poor decision, really. Um, but yeah, I think it was the second Does half. Does that even With the ghost goal, I know mm-hmm. Lachlan Gales would feel hard done by, but do you think that Thomas is able to be like, well, we shouldn't have had a man sent off? Maybe so, maybe so. But it's the difference between those incidents are, and I'm not I'm not taking away from St. Thomas, no, but the difference is the goal, it's so clear as day. It's over the line. Yeah. But with the red card, a lot of people would say it's a red. A lot of people would say it's not. Yeah. And it's just a differing opinion. But if you have that sort of an opinion, it's just your perspective on it. But the goal, it's so clearly obvious that it should have been given. So in a way, maybe not. But at the same time, O'Loch and Gaze were facing its 14 men for the entire second half and they still couldn't win the game. That's another yeah. angle, maybe. I don't want to be too harsh again on O'Loch and Gaze here, but, you know... When you're facing 14 men, you have to take advantage of that. And they just didn't. I don't know what was wrong with them in the second half. I think their shot accuracy dipped so much in that second half. And they just couldn't flick a switch. Um, in that period, like, Paddy Deegan was performing well. The half-back line I mentioned earlier, David Ford and, um, and Jordan Malloy were absolutely superb. But the mm-hmm. rest of the team didn't do enough around them. And that was probably the main difference as well. And um, and St. Thomas just had more than tank as well to go for the full uh, 60 minutes. And O'Loughlin Gay is kind of tired out. So, yeah, there was a lot of um, differences in the game. But uh, Thomas is already all Ireland champions and uh, fair play to him for it. Yeah, absolutely deserving. So, and the last thing that I'm going to do to, to wrap it up, the question I'm going to ask you is you selected David Burke as your man of the match on the, on the Instagram post immediately after the game. His story is incredible. The injury he had you know, his return, his recovery and his performance. He was majestic. That was Pete David Burke and um, leading his team to another All-Ireland title. Incredible. He's so man. He's a man mountain. 
He's just absolutely incredible in every way. He's just uh, brilliant attacking, brilliant defending. And um, even the interview was just emotional afterwards listening to him. Yeah. And it was just brilliant. It was just, it, these are the stories we live for. And at, at the end of it as well, Fintan O'Toole actually tweeted, was it only ironic as well that he got man of the match in this final after coming back from an injury? And as well as that, it was his younger brother that got the winning score as well. Yeah. And, you know, it's just a fairy tale story, isn't it? It really is for the Burke family. And um, yeah, it was just brilliant, brilliant to see. And that's what the club championship's all about. The stories, the, you know, the narratives and everything is just absolutely outstanding. And uh, fair play to David Burke. For, you would have said fair play to him recovered from the injury, just that. But to yeah. go on and win it on Ireland, it's just a remarkable story, really is. No doubt. Hats off to David Burke. Hats off to St. Thomas's, And hats off to Waddy Graham's Glen as well. All Ireland club champions, Glenn in the football, St. Thomas is in the hurling. It's been an absolute pleasure to recap the weekend with Matthew and with Eamon Dunhu as well. Big thanks to them. Big thanks to anybody that listened over the course of the live stream. Thank you for putting the comments in. Thank you for getting involved in the discussion. If you're watching this and we're not live anymore, put it in the comments below as well. Your opinions, I'll get around to them all. Until the next video, guys, here on Uncle Take care.